Hello, in this video I'm going to be showing you a neat trick in OBS Studio which I use in my streaming setup that takes advantage of one of the features of the Wavelink Studio from Elgato. In the review for the Wave Free Mic and Wavelink software, I did show you how to set up the Wavelink software in its basic setup and its kind of expected form, but I'm going to show you something slightly different in this video, which is the way I prefer to have mine set up. But let's take a quick look at Wavelink now just to remind ourselves of where we were at at the last video. And if you needed to know a bit more about this and what the options are available within this interface, I suggest you look at the previous video that I mentioned before. But just as a reminder, we have a bunch of different sources here. Our mic, our music input, at the moment that's linked to Pretzel Rocks. I've got my system sound, which is usually my game audio, and then voice chat, which is probably Discord. Ordinarily, the way this is supposed to work is that you would normally be expected to use your mic audio, your music, and everything else. Balance the audio in here using these options down here so you can hear what's actually being heard on stream, the stream output at the bottom. And then that is what we include inside OBS. So this is OBS, and as I've got four scenes, just kind of standard set of scenes, starting, chatting, game time, be right back kind of standard and then what I've had here is I have my everything else which is my stream audio and you can see that is currently bouncing away which is the music that you heard saw on the previous screen and then you have the mic audio on a separate input and the reason for doing this was so that we can click on filters and add in noise suppression or any other types of filters that we want to add VSTs and so on I am told that at the time of, of making this video the uh, Wavelink software is now into beta. When that drops, there will be support for VSTs as well, which is going to be amazing uh, within the actual software itself. That That is going to be a, a game changer because it means that you don't need to do what I showed you in the previous video. However, I still think it's worth doing this for the thing that I'm about to show you now. The way we've got this currently set up on this scene is we have my, my mic audio and then the stream audio on separate layers, which will have the game audio and so on. Now, the way I like to have mine set up is because I don't have like a fancy Go XLR or kind of an interface where I can control my audio volumes easily on different scenes as I'm, you know, I might be on a, on a starting screen and I don't necessarily want my mic to be there. So I'd mute my mic, but that's a lot of manual button pushing. Instead of using everything else on one separate stream audio for everything, the way I like to do it is to remove this completely and instead of using the audio input capture, I like to use the audio output capture. And if you look at the options here, for this screen here, I'm on my chatting screen. I'm gonna call mine music. And under here we have devices. So I'm gonna select Wavelink Music. We click OK. Now you can see in the bottom left hand corner of this screen that the music is bouncing. The music is, you can, on this scene, the music would be heard. Now, I can adjust this to get the right levels and not because this is a chat screen I'm probably going to reduce this down quite to a lower amount I'm not listening to the outputs here so I don't know for sure that that's the right level but that's essentially what I've done I've reduced the volume so now if I switch over to my starting screen on this screen what I probably want is I don't want my mic audio so I just won't include it in this list but I do want the music so I'm going to go to audio output capture I'm going to select the existing one I'm going to click OK so now you can see that the music is on this screen as well. But do you notice the issue here? The music on this screen is also at a low level. And if I was to bump this up back to a proper higher volume level, that's great on this scene, but when I switch back to chatting, music is still very loud and we don't want that. So the best thing I would suggest you do is create a second output capture. Call it something like music reduced. Select the same device that we did last time, Wavelink Music, click OK. And then now you can see that there are two options. But what we'll do is we'll bring this music reduce right down to a lower volume level. And what we'll do is for the original music, we're just going to remove it from this scene. So we now have on this scene, we have our music on a reduced volume level and mic. And on the starting screen, still the music at the higher volume level. And now we can do the same thing in the Be Right Back scene, for example. We can go into here, add the audio, add existing music. 
And we now have the volume level at the right volume level for our B right back scene as well. Finally, we can go into our game time screen. Maybe click audio output capture. We'll leave the music in there because we probably want the music in there to begin with. And we'll also bring in the audio input capture as well for the mic. So now you'll be able to hear me when I'm talking on the game screen. You'll be able to hear the music coming in at a reduced volume, which I will probably then have a button perhaps in Touch Portal that allows me to toggle the music completely off in that situation. But the great thing about that is it means that in um, if I'm playing a game like Minecraft where there's, there's, uh, it's quite a quiet game and there might be periods of time where it's a bit boring so i like to have background music in that scene but then perhaps if you're playing a game that is a bit more um has its own soundtrack or perhaps has uh, a need to be quite quiet so people can hear footsteps running around that sort of stuff you might you might then disable the music on this but for now i've got my music reduced volume i've got my mic input and i'm going to add a third one audio and this is going to be my system sound and that is going to be linked to Wavelink system. In fact, let's add let's add Discord as well. Audio output. This is my Discord. Look for Wavelink voice. There. Click. Okay. So now you can see that we've got the four audio channels: Discord, System, Mic, Music, all coming in on this particular scene and this scene only. And it just means that when I switch to my starting screen, I haven't got to worry about muting myself because it's just already pre-muted. -pre when I go to chatting, I'm ready to chat and I can talk. When I'm on my game screen, the mic is still present, but now I've also got the game audio already coming through via the wavelengths. And all of these are, as I said before, linked to this. This is the Wavelink software, the channels that we previously mentioned. Again, if you want to remind yourself about how to actually link these channels to individual applications and so on in windows remember over on the far right hand side here you have this when you click that you get access to this which allows you to specify where the audio which devices the different apps are using for their audio so for example pretzel is currently linked to my wavelink music and my output down up here would probably change to wavelink system so that everything else like the game audio gets routed to wavelink system so that's that's the way I have my setup in OBS and the reason that I do all of that is just it makes life easy. It means that I don't have to worry about faffing around with pushing buttons between scenes and all of that sort of stuff. It's just taken care of. So if you did find this video useful, please consider giving the video a like, subscribe, it really helps. And I will be producing more videos very soon, so I hope that you stick around for those. That's it for now. See you in the next video. Change weapons! Oh, why is he in the way?